Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see planning the Azure VMware solution deployment. So in this video, we will see how to identify the subscription, the resource group, the region or the location. We will define the resource names, how to identify the size of the host, determine the number of clusters and host, request a host quota uh, from within the Azure subscription, define the IP address segment for private cloud management, define the IP address segment for VM workloads, define the virtual network gateway, define VMware HCX network segments, and define determine whether to extend your networks or not. So this is the list that we will work on. Okay. So if when it comes to identifying the subscription, right? So we'll have to make sure that the subscription that we are planning to use for the deployment of Azure VM solution, you can either create a new one or you can request a new one. So the subscription must be associated with the Microsoft Enterprise Agreement, that is the EA or a cloud solution provider, Azure Plan CSP. And when you identify the resource group, you make sure that the resource group that you would use for the Azure VM solution, because generally a resource group is created specifically for the Azure VMware solution, but you can use the existing one as well, but it's always good to create a separate resource group. You identify the region because it is available in all the regions, so you will, it's your requirement which region you want to go with. So when it comes to the resource name, the resource name is a friendly and descriptive name in which we title the Azure VMware solution private cloud. For example, let's say I am deploying Azure VMware solution in my Azure subscription. I can name it as a private cloud, my private cloud or anything else. The name must not exceed 40 characters. If the name exceeds this limit, we won't be able to create public IP addresses for use within the private cloud. And when it comes to the host size, we want to use uh, when deploying the Azure VMware solution. So Azure VMware solution, the clusters are based on Hyper-V converged bare metal infrastructure. So let's say if the host type is AV36, the CPU would be dual until 18 core, 2.3 gigahertz. RAM would be 576 GBs and virtual SAN would be associated. So host used to build or scale clusters come from an isolated pool of host. Those hosts have passed hardware test and have had all the data security deleted. And when it comes to determine the number of clusters and host, so when you deploy the Azure VMware solution, you do, it consists of a private cloud containing a single cluster. So when you deploy the Azure VMware solution, it would contain a single cluster. Now I will have to determine or I'll have to define the number of hosts I want to deploy to the first cluster of my deployment. For each private cloud created, there's one virtual SAN cluster by default, always, please make a note of it. But I can add, delete and scale clusters. The minimum number of hosts per cluster and the initial deployment is three. Trial clusters are also available for evaluation and are limited to three hosts per private cloud. And when it comes to request a host quota, well, it's always crucial to request a host quota early. So after you, we have finished the planning process, we are ready to deploy the Azure VMware solution private cloud. Before requesting a host quota, make sure you have identified the Azure subscription, resource group, and region. Also make sure you have identified the size host and determine the number of clusters and host we will need. And uh, we can submit the request to the support team for the host quota. It may take up to three to five business days to confirm the request and allocate the host. And now if you want to define the IP address segment for private cloud management, for that, let me show you one image so that we can discuss that in detail. Okay, now as per this image, 
So Azure VMware solution requires a slash 22 CIDR network. For example, it may be 10.0.0.0 slash 22. This address space is carved into smaller network segments, also called subnets and used for Azure VMware solution management segments. So three subnets that we discussed in the previous video would be deployed uh, within the slash 22 address space prefix. And those would be Azure VMware solution management segments, including vCenter, v VMware HCX, NSX-T and vMotion functionality. All right, so you, you see here, this is the customer data center. This is the express route. And here you see the Azure, this is the vSphere cluster. Azure VMware solution private cloud, which is enabled here. And it has also the express route connectivity, dedicated Microsoft Enterprise Edge with the Azure VNet. It has a jump box for, uh, for us to connect to this Azure VMware solution deployment. And here you see the host, the your virtual SAN data store that is deployed when you deploy the solution. The number of host, the minimum is three. And then you have management, vMotion, vSAN network specifically for NSX and HCX manager. All right. And if you have an existing VNet, you want to deploy one more, make a connection with that as well. So it will be express route global reach connection. And if you want to define the IP address segment for workloads. So like any other VMware environment, the VM must connect to a network segment. As the production deployment of Azure VMware solution expands, there is often a combination of L2 extended segments from on-premises and local NXT network segments. For the initial deployment, identify a single network segment. For example, let's say we choose 10.0.4.0 slash 24. This network segment is used primarily for testing purposes. During the initial deployment, the address block shouldn't overlap with any other segments on premises or within Azure and should be within, and should not be within slash 22, right? So the, the network segment that I'm using for testing should be different from the network segment that I am using to deploy my Azure VMware solution. Okay. And when it comes to defining the virtual network gateway, Azure VMware solution requires an Azure virtual network and an express out circuit. We have to define whether we want to use an existing or a new express out virtual network gateway. If we decide to use a new virtual network gateway, we'll create it after creating the private cloud. It is acceptable to use an existing express out virtual network gateway and uh, for planning purposes as well. And we also have to define VMware HCX network segments as well. So VMware HCX is an application mobility platform that simplifies application migration, workload rebalancing, and business continuity across data centers and clouds. We can migrate the VMware workloads to Azure VMware solution and other connected sites through various migration types. So this VMware HCX connector deploys a subset of virtual appliances that require multiple IP segments. When we create the network profiles, we use the IP segments. And we have to identify the following for the VMware HCX deployment. So the, I have to choose from the management network. So when deploying VMware HCX on-premises, we will need to identify a management network for VMware HCX and the uplink network. When deploying the VMware HCX on-premises, we'll need to identify an uplink network from VMware HCX. And the vMotion network. When deploying VMware HCX on-premises, we'll need to identify a vMotion network for VMware HCX. Now, when it comes to specify whether we want to extend our networks or not, well, it's an option. We can extend network segments from on-premises to Azure VMware solution. If we do extend network segments, we have to identify those networks that the networks must connect to a vSphere distributed switch in my on-premise VMware environment and networks that are on vSphere standard switch cannot be extended. This, these are the highlights that I wanted to share with you guys before, we, before I show you the options that we select to deploy the Azure VMware solution. I hope you liked this video. If you have any queries, please mention them in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.